Good morning, everyone. I don't look my best, do I? <laughs> look my best. I look what I look like getting up early in the morning, right? Yes. But I don't know. Do some people wake up and they look, they're already all dolled up with this. No, you look kind of like this, don't you? Just put my hair up. I thought, well, that looks a little better, maybe. All right, so there is this going on. <laughs> I'm still in my robe and my pajama. I got to get up and and I go back to the barn. My brother-in-law pulled a hamstring, gosh, a month ago or something, and he's still hurting. And come to find out that you're supposed to rest and not do a thing and put some ice on it and elevate your leg. <laughs> okay. Which he didn't do. That's one of those things. He's 74 years old. He still goes up on the roofs. And he just uh, built for his son and family, his son's family, a uh, daughter-in-law, two children, wonderful children, amazingly smart children. But then who's not a smart kid in this family? <laughs> not my my husband's family. <laughs> They're all the children, every, my grandchildren, everyone's children that I know that has any kind of genetic connection to this Wooten family, uh, uh, born in the mountains, went through rough stuff, this, and that. Every one of them is a self-made genius when it comes to whatever they're doing. I'm not kidding, it's true. <laughs> and the children, same thing, of course, now, uh, and... Amazingly, uh, when I when I hear when I heard the stories on, for example, my uh, my children my grandchildren's great grandpa and my husband's father on how uh, and and his mother on how they started out right? or how specifically my husband's father started out here in the mountains somewhere and you know, under conditions that at, even at that time, you're going, what? Yeah. But it all worked out. But And the struggles right? all these children went through, right? With what? Have parents, well, one parent passed away, the mom. So there was the dad. Then with all the stuff that came with that and where they all went and then developed their own families. And, and it went from there. And then it went from there. And I ended up being... The wife of one of the, of one of the children, right? Of uh, yeah, one of those children. Okay, <laughs> and I see the just amazing talent that there is, naturally, it's it's just there, and on how they all may do with that and developed into these talents into these fantastic. Right? Is it music? Is it carpentry? Is it uh, in just whatever job that they're doing? Okay. Uh, yeah. And so on and so on. Okay. I, uh, my husband is just, he's, I don't know anything he doesn't know. If he puts his mind to it, and I don't know where he doesn't excel, really, when it comes down to it. Communication, maybe. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, and I forgot what I started out with. Oh, you come from humble beginnings, man. yes? And, uh, and who says that you can't excel? Man? Who says that? If you put your mind to it and don't become what? A lamenter, disappointed in that you weren't born rich or something. Eh? Everything handed to you eh? on a silver gold platter or something. I uh, I've been watching. I can't remember why I got into this all. Now I got into something else. Just getting excited about all them, them. Uh, oh, going to the barn. I have to go to the. Have to go to the barn now because finally realized my brother-in-law has to put up that leg. So he's not. We're, oh, he's last night's. Do you want me to go to the barn? And I said, no, you're not. You should stop it. You know, it's so difficult. 74 years old. It's so difficult for him to just 
Can he just sit? No, he just not. Don't do anything for a couple of days, right? Yes, difficult for some people. I have to learn that too. I have to tell you once I got used practice not doing anything. We're okay. I'm <laughs> just saying. I'm working on a quilt right now. So even when I'm just in the bed resting my legs, no, I'm quilting on I'm quilting something, painting something. Well, anyway, doing something. And uh, so I have to get ready pretty soon and go to the barn. Then in my and then in I am in my barn clothes. Oh, do I look all that great in my barn clothes? <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, and I want to go dry land fish hunting today. Yeah, they're also called morels. Uh, a wonderful mushroom. So well, there goes my. I got to listen to a more prayer vigil. And uh, and that's my plan today. I also have to go and get that jimson weed. We missed some of that jimson weed last year. It's coming back. And uh, it's not a plant that you want to spread when you have animals grazing this and that. So few things I need to take care of today if I like it or not. <laughs> oh, I like, to, I like doing all of it. Right? Once I'm out there, I just love it lamenting um people get discouraged when you make discoveries right especially in the realm of trusting god loving god understand this people can't you just not live in peace together don't you understand what a wonderful thing that would be yes can we just not can we not just lay down your web our weapons of whatever destruction, killing each other this snap and just start growing good food again? <laughs> All of us and do that. The thing is is that one should never be discouraged when you have make these discoveries. And then you don't have an audience. What kind of audience do I have here? And yet I still enjoy doing it. Because I gave it a purpose. Right? Reading the Bible. Restoring God's reputation. Number one. Okay. And uh, this is more fun. To do it. Yes. And then kind of. Well, whoever listens to it. Whoever doesn't. What does it matter? I'm still following. What? God's call. Yes. Isn't that the important part? The important part is when you make a discovery, a good discovery, is it physically or spiritually? Always on the side of goodness. That has to be all right. Yes. Share it somewhere. If, if it is writing a book, just write the book. The video. Yes. It's like people are unhappy when they're not being recognized for, hey, but I've got these revelations. Why aren't you listening to me? And basically, even being told off, go, go away. We don't want to hear that right now. You got other things to do. Yeah? Well, here's the thing with that right? when you're cooking, you're going to cook in the way that you would like to eat the food. And when someone else comes and says, but you should be doing it this way, you're probably going to look at it and say, well, why don't you cook your own food? <laughs> it's kind of like that, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So we've got to remember, right? Whose space am I in when I come up with certain things that then I want to be recognized by them rather than saying, well, uh, if 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 um, if this is not what what they're into, if this, if this is not what they want to accept, then I'll have to accept that as that being their space. Yes, but nobody's gonna stop you to keep working within your own space. Yes, that's freedom right there. If you don't like to be encroached, well, we shouldn't do that to others either, right? Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. Let's get going here. Oh, the family pledge looking right at me. Number three in the family pledge, our family centered on true love, pledges to perfect the four great realms of heart, the three great kingships in the realm of the royal family. <clears throat> this is one of the parts in the family pledge I think can be taken in many different directions. And again, I take it in the direction of this talks to me about unity and harmony. Within every family, within every heart, the realms of heart, the three great kingships. What is that? How people will come up with their own things. Yes? Because the word king is in there. People are going to take it one way or the other, and I'm not the one to tell you which way you should take that. I think that when you become a independent individual, you're capable of great things in your life and discoveries. You're capable of raising a great family when you are continuously looking for guidance on earth from someone else that then that dictates your life basically you haven't found to your own individuality then you're going to look at this in a different way tell people a different way again that's your space right then i got my space yeah okay all right so there we go yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always room for this and that and everything. So we are here in the second book of Chronicles 4. He also made a bronze altar 30 feet long, 30 feet wide. All right, wait a minute. 30 feet long, 30 feet wide. How wide is the building? So it's from one end to the other end. Okay. And 30 feet long, then that would only leave 50 feet for the rest, uh, uh, 20 feet for the rest of the, remember how big the temple was? That would only leave 20 feet for the rest of the, so the altar took up most of the, okay, I don't know. I'm just saying. And 15 feet high. What? 15 feet high? Wait a minute. How's that going to work? <laughs> he made a bronze altar, 30 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 15 feet high. Now, you guys imagine that. Something ain't right here. Then he forced a huge round tank. and uh, uh, so, Okay, so 15 feet across. From rim to rim. So that's taken up another 15 feet from the 20 feet we have left in that temple. The rim stood seven and a half feet above the floor. And was 45 feet around. What? Come again. 15 feet across from rim to rim. 45 feet around. Circumference? Okay. Well, yeah, if you go by the, right? Yeah, okay. That sounds about right. Not quite right. They didn't have that. Okay. <laughs> 45 feet around. That wouldn't fit in there anymore now. There's some wrong, there's some wrong measurements here then from the, for the temple. This tank was set on the backs of two rooms of metal oxen. What? 
pack. So two rows of metal oxen. Okay. Then on top of that, they were set on metal oxen. How big were they? Then it's even higher. The tank and oxen were cast as one piece. There were 12 of these oxen standing tail to tail, three facing north, three west, three south, and three east. The walls of the tank were five inches thick. That's about five inches. That's not. Ah, 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 no, I got it. That's right. I was quilting. That's five inches right there. That thick. Hmm, 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 hmm. My goodness. Flaring out like the cup of a lily, it held 3,000 barrels of water. He also constructed 10 vats for water to wash the offerings, five to the right of the huge tank and five to the left. The priests used the tank and not the vats for their own washing. A bathtub. It's a bathtub. <laughs> the tank and not the, for their own one. How did they wash themselves? I mean, they have to, there had to be some ladders going up, right? And they had to get into the... So what? They just had a big old communal bath in the tank that was... <laughs> <coughs> Who knows what else was going on in there? I don't even want to know. Oh, just... I'm not going to... Oh. Ah, uh, okay, guys, I'm just saying. Translations. Are they right? Okay. Uh, carefully following God's instructions, he then cast ten gold lampstands and placed them in the temple, five against each wall, carefully following God's instructions. I'm sorry, what? Had to be thrown in there. To, okay. I'm, you know what? I'm not going to go there. I've already talked enough about that. I know, Father. God didn't have anything to do with these instructions. He then cast ten gold lampstands and placed them in the temple, five against each wall. He also built ten tables and placed five against each wall on the right and left. They don't tell us exactly how long these tables were because there was no room in there. Not according to the... What are they going to put anything else? And he molded a hundred solid gold bowls. Solid gold? As far as I know, there is, I don't know what is actually made out of solid gold, but that's not really something. They're bowls, so they're going to be used for something. Solid gold, well, that's too malleable. Well, anyway, then he constructed a court for the priests, also the public court, and overlaid the doors of these courts with bronze. I don't know what that means. The huge tank was in the southeast. The huge tank was in the southeast corner of the outer room of the temple. Oh, oh, they added on some more stuff. Huramabi also made the necessary pots, shovels, and basins for use in connection with the sacrifices. So at last, he completed the work assigned to him by King Solomon. The construction of the two pillars, one person did all this, sounds like. Okay, I'm sure he had workers. That sound, sounds like an unbelievable task. For one person. The two flared capitals on the tops of the pillars. The, the two sets of chains on the capitals. The 400 pomegranates hanging from the, from the two sets of chains on the capitals. The bases for the vats and the vats themselves. The huge tank and the 12 oxen under it. The pots, shovels and flesh hooks. This skillful craftsman, Huramabi, made all of the above-mentioned items for King Solomon using polished bronze. Oh, made them all for King Solomon. What happened to God here? Made them all for God, right? Made them all for King Solomon. I mean, you see, I mean, come on now. Ugh. <laughs> we all know what's going on here. 
The king did the casting at the clay banks of the Jordan Valley between Sukkoth and Saradar. The king did the casting at the clay banks. He didn't do a thing. Who did it? Great quantities of bronze were used, too heavy to weigh. I wonder how they moved it all. Well, you can move heavy objects, you know, if you know how to, if you know a little bit about the construction of on how to move something that, that can't be done. But in the temple, only gold was used. For Solomon commanded that all of the utensils, the altar, and the table for the bread of the presence must be made of gold. Also the lamps and lampstands, the floor decoration, tongs, lamp snuffers, basins, spoons, and fire pans, all were made of pure gold. Even the doorway of the temple, the main door, and the inner doors, the Holy of Holies, were of gold. You know, that's the end of the fourth. You know, it reminds me of uh, 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 the, ugh. The Holy Grail, right? The Holy Grail is supposed to be the cup that Jesus used to drink out of. And everybody was looking. And remember, there's some movies out, and there's some funny ones out too, but where they're going, they're looking, they're hunting down the Holy Grail, and it's, 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 uh, uh, the room where it is in is, is all protected by these, uh, knights, right? What are they called? Knights of the... Ugh, something. And one knight was still alive, right? older than old, older than older, and I was okay. <laughs> and when... Oh, it was... Oh, it wasn't one of Indiana Jones's movies, right? Yes, yes. And goes in, and they, there's all these cups. You had to choose one, right? Yes. And everyone... Before Indiana Jones, okay, as the story goes, chose what? The fanciest cup that they could find. And Indiana Jones kind of thinks, wait a minute, but Jesus was a very poor dude. Yeah? So it's unlikely, and in the way that he lived and taught, it's most likely not something that is that, yeah? but what is valued by men. Is probably not something that he had, or in that sense, and he picked the most simple one, and it ended up being that one. Kind of reminded me just of that story. While I was reading this, and on how, again, gold is given this. That, why is gold so precious? What for? Can you eat it? Drink it? What's it gonna do for your survival? You know, unless you deal with currency and all that, but still. Right? And I always found it interesting when, oh, you need to buy gold. You know, it's it's really, really gold's going to what? Gold's going to do what? When for some reason or another, the monetary system's going to collapse. What will be important then? Huh? To be surrounded by people with skills. <laughs> That's more worth than gold. <laughs> That then you can, and also be someone uh, uh, ha that has skills, right? And, uh, <coughs> and then you trade. All right, just saying. <coughs> so, again, who made certain things so valuable, right? So precious. And yet I look at it and go, okay, good luck with that. What are you going to do with all of that? You know, it doesn't make any sense to me. But it makes sense to some. So there you go, right? Yes? Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Just real quick to finish up. I'm watching a cooking show. I love cooking shows. I love baking shows. Uh... I love any anything kind of that uh, is a, a competition art. This that I, I enjoy watching it. I enjoy what the people uh, create. Okay, yes, their talents, what they come up with. The one thing I didn't enjoy in this 
it's called top chef was that to bleep out so much of the language and I'm thinking like maybe that's one of the reasons I don't really go to restaurants anymore because uh, is that what cooks do I never cuss and curse over my food or when I'm cooking food that's already that must be really I don't know I is that what you do when you cook? You cuss and curse to make a good, really wonderful, delicious, delicate, delicious uh, meal? I can't quite see how that will come out good. So anyway, so they bleeped it out, though. So all right, but I was, and that's one reason I don't watch Hell's Kitchen. Cause I can't stand that guy's language. Don't. I just don't. I, just, I can't see on how food will taste good after that. Well, if you don't know, I, I'll know. <laughs> that food will talk to me. <coughs> <coughs> but it was interesting to watch the show. And... It's like, just like with any show like this where there is a competition, you can tell the people who will win, they, they are really giving from themselves. It doesn't matter what gender they are. It doesn't matter what color they are. It does, their background doesn't matter. They give from their heart to mine. And they have talent and a love for cooking in this instant. And they're putting all of that in there. And you can always tell the ones that don't have that straight in their head and are using certain things that, in my opinion, has nothing to do with cooking. Okay, Culture, maybe. Yeah. Some things. I like to do, well, I have some. I have some uh, heritage. Right? I have some some uh, foods inherited in my in my family, right? and I like to cook with that as well. Yes, okay. But then you love again the ingredients. What does that have to do with? All right, just saying. So I find it interesting in a lot of these competitions with the diversity of the people and how they make that a part of it which I can't see why. <laughs> and often they don't get very far. You can <laughs> tell <coughs> <coughs> that the ones who, who are doing this, uh, is it the art? Is it blowing glass? Is it cooking? Is it uh, baking? Is it, okay, uh, uh, art? Uh, any kind of art uh, is it even in the wilderness uh, alone or something right? when they're just their self with the, all the goodness within them and loving something so much that they want to see am i good enough to compete with this they those are the ones that win done do you know what i mean well, why is that? I guess people need to... Why would I tell you? People need to figure that out on their own. Yeah. I started out with... Well, also, you can't... You're not heard. This or, so you start to lament. Why? <laughs> oh, boy. Then you're unsure in yourself as well. Yes. Oh, red star. Okay. To go back to the food one more time, though. I give you an example that will prove exactly everything that I said. While Nancy and I were doing the prayer breakfast, right? There's one thing. Oh, Nancy was a great help, okay? And I'm one of these people. When I'm in charge of something, I do most of it, okay? Well, most of it. I have a way of directing things, and I know I'm very organized, right? And things work out that way. I know my strengths. And Nancy it was always great because she would, she literally would just listen. What do you need? Okay, I'm going to do that. 
and she had her own slow way that drove me up the wall sometimes. Just, okay, if you don't get going on that, man, we're not going to have that out there. She'd give me this look. Well, that's what you got. What you going to do about it? Here's the thing that I've learned. Okay, Nancy's doing her thing. She'd work on a fruit salad. Or she'd work on a pot of rice. <laughs> Something like that. And I would take her the whole time. And I'd go, okay. But God would always send other ladies, right? my sisters in faith, into the kitchen. That I'd then say, hey, you need any help? Yes, I do. <laughs> Can you do this, 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 and this? Yeah. And we'd end up, you know, five, six ladies in the kitchen, all getting you know, everything done. But Nancy would work on that one food. Not always, but sometimes that's, I guess it just came over her. And how, what do you do when the Holy Spirit comes up down on top of you? And that is that, right? Yes. Especially as us women. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> <coughs> that's because of true mother, by the way. <coughs> anyway, so she'd fix that and, and, uh, Put it out there. Now, nobody else knew about that. I'm the only one who knew that. Not even the women in there in the kitchen with me also working knew what was going on. I had to learn what was going on too. But I recognized it pretty quick because the first time she's ever done that, put that dish out there on the table, guess what was gone first? It was like her, her dish, whatever it was, that she made <laughs> in a whole four hours or something <laughs> till breakfast. <laughs> the people just flocked to it. Okay. It was like that was the one dish everybody wanted right to begin with. And there was never a morsel left of that dish. All right. Could we have done that with every dish there? No. That would have taken, I don't know, two days, three days, or I'm just saying. But to have Nancy in that kitchen and paying such attention to one dish, it didn't matter how fancy or simple it was. This kind of attention and the, no doubt the prayer and love that she poured into it. And even though here I am saying, Nancy, you got to be kidding me. What are you still doing with this? That should have been done three hours ago. And just, well, <laughs> do you know what I mean? She did not let anyone distract her from what she was doing. That was that. And it was always the best received dish on two tables laden with food. Ah, yes, see? Yes. Of course, the other food was great, too. I don't cuss and curse over my food or this or that. I don't do that. Everybody always loved everything that her and I cooked together. Everything. And, of course, it was never just her and I. We had Korean sisters, Japanese sisters, American sisters, Hispanic sisters, we all work together to make a meal what? The best ever, every time you will eat. Isn't that absolutely cool? So do I have a cookbook out? Do I have a show where I cook? And sometimes I show what I cook. Yeah. Or this or no. No. But the memories will always be there of this amazing time cooking together for so many people and on how what a difference it makes when you put your heart and soul into cooking hmm? so instead of cussing and cursing over food like these chefs top chefs are doing why don't you pray over it? Invite spirit or good spirit of God to be there with you. I'm just saying. All right. 
and to this day, I love cooking. And now, of course, I'm watching Top Chef. You know, I just kind of go past the bleeds because I'm still interested in how they kind of what they do. And, and I'm looking what I have at home. And I, you should see what I come up with. <laughs> with what I've got. Yes. Yeah. You'd be amazed on how uh, here they call it red cabbage. We call it in Switzerland, we call it blue cabbage. You know, so something in between probably because it, well, it's neither or it's purple cabbage or you know, whatever. <laughs> it turns blue when you cook it. Not this one, though. This one stayed nice and had a really beautiful, ah, had a beautiful color. So I made this red cabbage and uh, I added on because that's, that's something in Switzerland during the fall time. When, when the hunters bring deer home, then the deer gets uh, first infused in red wine, this and that. And, uh, and then you cook, and it's a, it's a specific tradition and meal that you have in the fall. It's, deli it's just so good. And uh goes with spatzli. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Oh, I wanted to, yeah, I so saw those, somebody made them, going, hey, spatzli, yo, that's more here, mm -hmm. uh, I want to make some of those too, so good, and you add into the cabbage, you add chestnuts, and I did, I didn't cut mine fine or anything, that's not how you do it, you kind of just boil the chestnuts, and then, uh, and I steamed the cabbage, I added some chili to the cabbage. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and then, uh, uh, so I steamed the cabbage, and boiled the chestnuts. Then I took them out of the hull, just halved them, and some of them in quarters. And then I put everything into a frying pan with very little butter and uh, and and sauteed everything really lightly. Uh, not, not strong, or just lightly. And then add a little chili, some pepper, a little bit. It's just a little bit of salt. And it was delicious. It was really, really, really good. Yeah, what did I make with it? I made uh, pollock. We, I had pollock. And I breaded the pollock with garlic chunks in it and, uh, and dill. And fried that, which came out really good. And put cheese over top. Came out really good. Put cheese over top. Put it in the broiler for just a couple of minutes. That came out really good. And I made rice with it. Which I have to say, that's my, my sister-in-law. She The first time she ever made the rice, she said, you want me to make the rice? I said, well, good. Yeah, go ahead. And she adds just a little butter into it. And I, and I thought, wow, this is real. I've never made rice like that. <laughs> I don't know why. And that uh, tasted really good. So that's what I did. And I added um, I added some green onions, uh, the, the wild chives to it. And it turned out a little pepper. Pepper's just got to go everywhere with me. And it also, it was just the whole dish was just really, really good. I thought and everybody else ate some too. It was really good. Definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, mm, mm, just, mm. Sorry, yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there it is. I guess talking about all this, yes, and then the passage that we read. Where is Solomon's attention? Yes. Well, but... It, he made a promise, you know, to build that temple or, you know, his father couldn't do it because God didn't want him to do it. And then, okay. The, what I find when I read something like this now, okay, I'm here now, I wasn't there then. If one were to give, and then I brought up the food, if one were to give, as much care to everyone's life right, around the world 
That includes plants and animals, not just human beings. On the care and the value that's being put into making this temple value, right? Of, of value. Don't you think, what would God choose? A community that really values its people, cares for its people, or a temple that has value, that kind of value with precious metals and gems and this and that. Where do you think God would be present? Both? Maybe. If the conditions are right, maybe. I have a feeling that God very much would choose the living thing. The community. I think that God very much would want to be around his children. And we are all his children, if we like it or not. That's just what it is. Yes. Anyway, that's what I have to share this morning. I've got to get ready and go to the barn. So that's it for this morning. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. And I will talk to you another time. <laughs>